So for this project, we are going to talk about hand gesture recognition and hand tracking for web control. The presentation will be delivered by Mustafa, Charles, Iris, Kathy, and myself. The team explored the field of touchless user interface and focuses on three main tasks, hand gesture recognition, hand tracking, and their application. The objective is to control computer and robotic car via hand gesture and motion without touching a keyboard, mouse, or screen. By implementing different neural networks, the team successfully creates a touchless interface and explore the different dynamic of human computer interactions. For today's presentation, let's start with gesture recognition. The data set we use is the gesture data set. It's a large collection of label video clips that shows human performing predefined hand gesture in front of a laptop. There are 118,562 videos in the training set and 14,787 videos in the validation set. RGB frames are converted to grayscale and we resize the image to 112 times 112 and performing mean subtractions for each sample. Note that we unify the frames by generating 30 frame clips about selected temporal positions. If the videos are shorter than 30 frames, we loop the videos as many times as necessary. As Vicky said, um, we had an incredible, uh, incredibly large data set that we were working with uh, uh, to take on the challenging task of complex hand gesture recognition. And in order to achieve this, we were exploring different network architectures that we could actually use uh, in order to do this task. So in, in the literature uh, and historically, people have been using uh, 2D CNNs and uh, various other approaches uh, to actually conduct hand gesture recognition. Uh, so what we wanted to do was test two different network architectures. The first is CONF3D network, which uh, really tests the limits of 3D CNNs uh, to do a feature extraction of um, uh, hand gesture uh, data. Uh, and to build on this, we also decided to look at C3D Superlight, which is a model architecture developed by uh, a group at IBM that uh, not only uses 3D CNNs to conduct feature extraction, uh, but also uses an LSTM to do global temporal modeling. So uh, getting some of the uh, time series um, aspect of hand gestures uh, and incorporating that into actually recognizing what those are. Uh, next slide, Vicky. So um, C3D Superlight actually performed quite well compared to the first architecture. And this is the training results, both the uh, training and validation accuracy, as well as the training and validation loss. Uh, as you can see, the accuracy was uh, quite high and the, uh, it, I think around uh, Epoch 8, it started overfitting a bit, but uh, we let it run till Epoch 14 uh, and um, got some pretty good and consistent results that when applied in the real world still uh, uh, made sense. So more specifically, uh, next slide. Uh, the CONF3D got a training accuracy of 92.53% on the training set and a validation accuracy of 81.46%. Um, the C3D Superlight, uh, although it didn't perform as well in the training set, um, it actually outperformed the CONF3D model in the validation accuracy by around 5%. Uh, uh, there was a, around a 5% increase in the validation accuracy. Uh, this suggested to us that the C3D Superlight model was much more of a balanced model that could uh, generalize to uh, different scenarios. Uh, and it was also a faster uh, model when uh, looking at the frames per second on the GPU. And in the top right, you can see a little demo of the uh, model in action. Uh, it's capable of detecting gestures uh, such as swiping left and swiping right. Uh, I'll pass it on to Charles to talk about hand uh, localization. So the purpose of the localization or hand tracking team uh, was to find an approach which would allow the accurate detection of the hand itself when given an input image or video feed. Uh, it sounds relatively straightforward, but keep in mind that the model must be able to determine the location of unobstructed hands along with tilted, rotated, and covered hands, while also being able to work in different lighting levels and operate in real time. Now this presents an opportunity to utilize a new deep learning technique for the task known as object detection. Next slide, please. Oh, actually, uh, keep it on the previous slide. Um, oh yeah, okay. So as such, the model we decided to use was the SSD or specifically utilizing transfer learning on the SSD MobileNet V2. 
Originally proposed by Liu et al. in 2016, the single shot detector, as it is known, uh, is an object detection algorithm created to prioritize speed while demonstrating competitive accuracies. Previous works all utilized RCNN-based approaches, which were slow to train and also slow when put into practice. Their three-step process of first hypothesizing bounding boxes, then resampling pixels and features for each box, and then finally applying a classifier all in a sequential manner made the model very slow, albeit quite accurate. Um, however, the SSD utilizes no proposal generation and no pixel or feature resampling, performing all its computations in a single network that's built on a VGG16 backbone, or in our case, a mobile net. For those who aren't familiar with VGG16, uh, it is a well-known convolutional neural network architecture proposed by these guys at Oxford. You can read the paper online. Um, but as you can see from the image on the slide, SSD's approach to object detection involves replacing VGG16's fully connected layers at the end with convolutional filters decreasing in size in order to predict category scores and box offsets. This allows bounding boxes to be predicted at different scales along the network, making its accuracy competitive in relation to previous RCNN-based uh, approaches, albeit with a much faster runtime. Next slide, please. And I'll pass it on to Kathy to talk about the data set and training. Mm -hmm. So the SSD is very simple to train as well requires only one input image and ground truth label boxes for each object in um, the image. So the data set we use is the Eagle Head uh, data, public data set provided by Indiana University. So the data set has uh, 48 Google Glass videos of complex first person interaction between two people from which the video, the frames of the video were extracted and ground truth labels were um, obtained. So um, these were used to train the SSD mobile net B2 tr through transfer learning, which allows us to focus on the detection of hands. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, so the model was trained for a wide range of iterations from 15K to 50K. Uh, with 15 to 20K iteration, um, through their, although their accuracy did converge in the end, uh, it is kind, they're kind, kind of like inconsistent because sometimes they're enabled to um, distinguish between a person's hand and a person's face. As such, we determined that uh, the model was not trained enough and we need to continue to incre increase the number of iterations. However, we discovered another issue after training for 30K steps, which was the model was unable to detect the location of the hands occasionally. This effect, um, this effect becomes more apparent as we increase the number of iterations to 50K, which led us to realize that there is an overfitting. Um, so subsequently, we um, tested some of the earlier iterations and found a sweet spot between 20K to 25K. Well, for 20K, it is slightly inaccurate, but for 25K, it is slightly overfitted. So we chose 22.5K, which is um, exactly halfway between. And then we found the best performance, which is highlighted in green, um, shown on this table. Uh, next slide, please. So these are our final results for the training process. Um, yeah, and next slide, please. And here are some demonstration of um, our model's performance with the best model we obtained. Yeah, and next slide, please. There are so many areas we can apply the two models on, and we finally decided to apply it um, two aspects based on the level of practicability. The first application that we use the gesture recognition model to realize is gesture-oriented robot car. By recognizing a specific group of gestures like thumb up and swiping to right, the car is controlled to move forward and turn right. Then we move our goal on to utilizing the two models to control mouse and website-based application. The website-based application we try to apply the gesture recognition model on is this little game called Breakout. When the hand is swiping with two fingers to left or right, the pedal will move toward to the same direction as the finger's movement. So in the next video, the mouse is moving based on the movement of the hand. The clicking action is realized by estimating the elapsed time between two movements of the hand and the location of the hand in the popping window. In the, if the hand is moving within 10% of the screen after two seconds, and clicking action is made by the mouse.
2020 is an unusual year. In the midst of COVID-19, touching different surfaces frequently might not be a good idea. Therefore, contactless interface can be an area of future development. We hope this project will inspire the growth of other ideas, and we hope to apply our knowledge and create applications that will add value to the society at large. Thank you, and we are open to questions.